An anonymous poet penned these words, grace and majesty alike, basic power, living force. Equine King, the Clydesdale Horse. Hello, I'm Connie Alexander. Legend has it that the regal Clydesdale was the mount of choice for King Arthur and his knights. Although we can't verify that, we do know this wonderful breed originated in Scotland during the mid-18th century. The Clyde Valley in Lanarkshire, Scotland was the place of origin for this breed of heavy draft horse. The sixth Duke of Hamilton imported a Flemish stallion from Flanders in Northern Europe and began a breeding program with a workhorse mare. The breed continued to evolve when Frisian stallions added their genes to the mix and the characteristics of the Clydesdales were established. The name Clydesdale became official in 1826 at the Glasgow Exhibition in Scotland. Originally bred for heavy work, such as hauling coal and farm work, the Clydesdale was soon put to work as a carriage horse. This hard-working breed became well known and was soon spreading throughout all of Scotland and Northern England. The Clyde was imported into the United States before the Civil War, but not before gaining tremendous popularity in Australia, New Zealand, and Canada. As was popular in European countries, companies such as breweries put colorful four and six horse hitches together to advertise their products. The Budweiser Clydesdales have contributed greatly to making this breed one of the most recognizable in the United States. Today, the Clyde is the only draft breed in its native Scotland and New Zealand. In the United States, approximately 400 Clydesdales are registered each year. The Clydesdale is bred for action. Not action that describes speed, but action that means high lifting of the feet. The inside of every shoe should be easily seen by an observer standing behind. This breed is often described as having strength, agility, and docility. They possess quality and weight. With thundering grace, they cover ground with what looks like little effort. These stately horses exhibit exceptional wearing qualities of feet and legs. Their feet are very large, round, and springy. They have distinctive long silky hair below the knees. This hair is called feathers and draws attention to their high stepping gait. The most common body color is bay, with white faces and white socks that end in the bright white of their feathers. Other colors include black, brown, and chestnut. The head of a Clyde has an open, flat forehead, wide muzzle, and bright, intelligent eyes. Their necks are well arched and long. The back should be short and the withers high. The Clydesdale stands between 16 and 19 hands high and weighs 1,600 to 2,200 pounds. These large horses may eat 25 to 50 pounds of hay and two to 10 pounds of grain daily, depending on their age and workload. Even though the Clyde has been replaced on farms by tractors, this hardworking beauty is still active in some areas of agriculture and forestry where tractors are unable to go. As this breed grows ever more popular, the kinds of equine events they are participating in has also grown. Once seen as a carriage or hitch horse, the Clyde is pursuing dressage, hunter-jumper, trail, and therapeutic riding. They are beginning to take their place as pleasure and recreation horses. As anyone who knows and loves these huge horses will tell you, they are both intelligent and gentle. This Scottish giant is truly an equine king. John Wiggins has come to love this stylish, gentle breed. He has been raising Clydesdales in northern Alabama for over 10 years. He talked with us about the Clyde. I've been working with Clydes at WW Stables for over 12 years now. And enjoyed every minute of it. <laughs> The Clydesdale is a very, very good-natured animal. They, they don't, they're just real docile. They don't, they're not hyper like a lot of smaller horses are. Uh, if they weren't with the size that they are, they could really do uh, a lot of dangerous things to people, but they're very, very 
calm animal. They, they are real nice. You have a more of a problem with Clyde's feet uh, uh, than you do a lighter horse due to their size and their weight. Uh, they, of course, they have big feet, and, and all the weight on those big feet creates a lot of, of foot problems. You have to really take care of their feet. Clydesdale horses have a tendency to uh, get an infection in their feet that we call scratches, and it's due to dampness in their feathers, which uh, does not, never dries as long as they're outside. And we have to keep them up a lot to, in a good stall with shavings to, to dry these feet and, and keep down this, this bacterial that it, 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 they'll just scratch it and gnaw on it and, and bite all their feathers off if you don't treat it. And, and cleanliness and dryness is the best thing. And, and uh, we, we put mineral oil on them, and we put sulfur in them, and, uh, and wash them daily and to, if they get the scratches. And when they get the scratches, you, you just have to take care of it every day to, to get rid of it. Uh, they, some are, who have heavy feathers tend to have worse cases of scratches than the ones that are thinner. So, Sometimes we thin the feathers to where they, uh, it'd be easier to dry the, the, the feet. The Clyde comes, the most popular, I guess, is Bay. They, they are some that are, are, are wrong, and they are quite a few blacks. A lot of people like blacks. Uh, we prefer bays, and most people do. But there are some, some black, and there's some black hitches, and they're real nice. But we prefer bay and full whites is, our, is what we like. We do parades with a hitch wagon. We do weddings and special occasions with a, a carriage. We do um, shows. We, we halt a show, and they they have started a, uh, a draft horse under saddle class at the shows, and which is a really fast growing class. People really enjoy riding Clyde. We don't ride at all at WW Stables, but we do a lot of hitching. But there are a lot of people who are riding Clydes. I, I've also heard people use Clydes for trail horses. So. They, they, there's a lot of ways that they're, they're beginning to be used other than just pulling a hitch back. I'm in the auto salvage business, and, and my son was never interested in automobiles. And he wanted to get horses, and I told him if he would find a breed that wasn't in behind everyone's neighborhood backyard, that we would buy some horses. So he picked the Clydesdale breed, and we, we've had them ever since. He's gone, married, and moved away and gone, and I've got them, and I'm proud of them. I've been working with Clydesdales for about six months, and I love them. They're, they're big, gentle animals, and they're, they're just real easy to fall in love with. I've been working with the Clydes for uh, approximately 10 years. and then, uh, What attracted you to the big, the big horses? Well, I've always loved horses, and the bigger they got, the better they got. That's <laughs> the power, the strength. When you're sitting on top of the wagon of a four horse, or a team, or a six horse, you've got a lot of horsepower in front of you. You feel a lot of pull in the reins. There is definitely, you definitely feel all the power of these horses out in front of you. But it's exciting. It's a lot of fun. It's just, I just really enjoy it. Uh, as far as feeling comfortable with it, uh, uh, it, it, it takes a while because each one of them is individual and you're controlling each horse individual and it, uh, it I don't know, it's an adrenaline rush that you just can't, uh, <laughs> you can't, you can't describe it. it it's it's uh, the powerful, it's, it's You don't feel it anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> I've been a farrier for about a year and a half, probably about six months I've been shooing Clydesdales. 
I've been a farrier for 30 some odd years there and uh, mostly saddle horses up, up until I started with the Clydes and, uh, and then uh, still do saddle horses uh, but no uh, build up now, just, just uh, regular shoeing and, and then the Clydes. Just what the difference in a, in a Clyde and a regular horse, this is a regular size horseshoe. That's a, a naught and it's a, probably a normal size for a saddle horse. This is a normal size for a, a Clyde. And this, if you'll notice this foot here is, is, is more rounded, and this is what we call a scotch bottom shoe, and it's a show, a show shoe. And we put the scotch bottom on them with pads and all, and also a clip with heels and drill tech. The drill tech is put on here to keep the horses from slipping. And on the it, pavement. On pavement and, and asphalt or, you know, it, uh, stuff it, it, so that they don't, they don't slip. And there's quite a bit of difference in the design of the foot. So it's a uh, lot, uh, it's uh, something you just have to experience and see, really. The toe clip is set, the horse's foot would set on top of the shoe this way. This toe clip is bent over on to the top of the hoof wall, and that helps hold the shoe on because the Clydesdale's foot is so heavy and they're real bad about pulling their shoes off. The shoes are not easily kept on even though you see ten whole nails in here. It's still, so it's not easy to keep on, so you cut a notch in the hoof and this bends over and it helps hold the shoe on, where you see these don't have it. Um, there's a lot more danger in shoeing a Clydesdale than there is a regular saddle horse. Um, their feet and their, their well, a, a regular saddle horse, an average saddle horse is going to weigh, you know, 1,000, 1,200 pounds. Your average Clydesdale is going to weigh 2,000 up. So you have a 2,000 pound or, or 2,200 pound horse. You have a, it, when they jerk and they move, their feet are very heavy. They're going to, they get ready to put their foot down. They're going to put their foot down. You need to be ready to turn it loose and let it go because they can drag you and, and get you hurt quick. Shunna Clyde is a little different because you've got uh, uh, bigger nails. You, where you're a normal saddle horse, you're shooting a nail through about this long and then the Clyde you're shooting a 16 through. And when you drive that nail through there, and if they jerk their feet, you've got nails through your legs. The chaps are there, but the chaps only help for a little bit. They don't, uh, they don't do the protecting, and, and you, you will get puncture wounds, so it's a little more dangerous. Showing a Clydesdale involves a lot of work. There is a lot of um, bathing and grooming and um, wrapping their manes and tails. Uh, there's a lot of grooming involved in it with the feathers. Um, it's a lot of fun though. You go in the ring and, and everybody's excited and the music's playing and, and the horse is going. And it's, it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. Well, uh, I drive a cart, uh, four horse, uh, two horse hitch, unicorn hitch. Tandem. Uh, tandems. Uh, and it's, uh, it's just a feeling that you can't, uh, it's hard to describe the feeling. Like you say, like she says there, when you get out there and, and the music is playing, the horses gets the beat. And the horses are wanting to go. They 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 feel it. They get they, they're not they're not as nervous as they as you think they are. But they're wanting to go because they're enjoying it their own self. And <laughs> you can't you can't describe it. It's just <laughs> go. <laughs> downright fun. Downright yeah. fun. There you are. Downright yeah. fun. What motivates me to be involved with these horses? It's it, there's nothing like them. They're big. They weigh a ton but they are the sweetest, most gentle horses. They have big hearts, hearts bigger than their feet. Uh, they're, <laughs> they're, they're great. They're really lovable horses, and they're, they're just a lot of fun. I love working with them because I don't, it's, uh, they're beautiful animals, and it's a challenge. Every day is a challenge. Each horse has got its own temperament, its own individual mind, and it's a, it's a challenge. And, Especially when you get in the show ring and he pours his heart out, the least you can do is back him up. And that's, that's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. It's a challenge. <laughs> and I like a good challenge. illness can be a significant problem for your horse. Dr. Johnson discussed this group of equine illnesses and what signs you will see if your horse has developed a respiratory illness. 
When a horse starts to develop any respiratory problems, some of the more common signs that you'll see will be the runny eyes and the runny nose. They'll have shortness of breath or labored breathing. Sometimes they can even have exercise intolerance, and that's something that a horse owner would pick up first. When you first see any signs of respiratory problems, you want to go ahead and call your vet because that way you can catch it before it develops into something a whole lot worse. Whenever the vet comes to check your horse for respiratory problems, they'll first they'll pay attention to the nasal and ocular discharge. They'll notice if there's any outward signs of labored breathing or respiratory problems or distress. Then they will uh, use their stethoscope to escalt all the lung quadrants. There are two on each side that we'll look for and we'll want to make sure that they're all clear. Uh, another thing that they'll do, sometimes they may have to do a CBC and check the blood panel, see if there are any uh, high white cells, which would indicate infection. Uh, we also want to do a chemistry panel. There are many different types of respiratory problems that a horse can develop. Uh, the first would be bacterial problems. Uh, that's like the common cold, the strangles. Uh, there's also the fungal problems. They pick those up most commonly in the barns. Um, most of the time, if you were to check the spores in a barn, 90% of them will be fungus. Um, another problem is allergic respiratory problems, and they pick those up most commonly in the pasture, but a few of those can come from within the barn. And then another very common one are the viral diseases, things like rhinopneumonitis, which is a herpes virus, influenza. Another common one is EVA, which is equine viral arteritis. Uh, there are several uh, really common ones of these viral diseases. Those are the most common ones that horses will catch. Well, our best defense against these respiratory diseases is vaccination. There are a lot of vaccines on the market these days, particularly for the rhinopneumonitis, the influenza. There's also some vaccines for the strangles. Um, these things offer really good protection. We want to vaccinate at least one time per year, but if we are taking our horse out a lot and we're around a lot of other horses, we want to do that twice a year. Now another important aspect of warding off these diseases is management techniques. We want to make sure that our stalls stay very clean. We want to make sure that we have really good ventilation in our barns. They need fresh air circulating through those barns all the time particularly in the winter time. Another important factor is to reduce the dust in the barn and on the hay. We also want to avoid, avoid any mold on the hay. Also, stress. Stress-related illness is a big problem in horses, and so we want to make sure that we don't have a lot of overcrowding. We want to avoid extreme temperatures, extreme heat, or extreme cold. We want to keep them comfortable. John Lyons, America's most trusted horseman, helps people understand and influence the behavior of their horses. We asked John about the most frequent mistakes people make with their horses. His answer may surprise you. Okay, what mistakes does a new horse owner or, or a horse owner many times make with a horse? Uh, I never teach people that they do things wrong. I only teach people that they do things differently. And as we do, diff do things differently, we get a different result, all right? So if I think in terms of right and wrong, then all of a sudden I build walls, you know, between me and other people. I build walls between them and their horse. Their horse is right and they're wrong, or they're, or they're wrong and the horse is right. You know, the horse is stubborn, you know, those kind of things. And so, um, you know, I, I never talk in terms of right and wrong or mistakes. I only talk in, in terms of if we do this action, we get this response. You know, this is the type of response that we get. Some of the, the basic things that we do is that all of us do is we're not consistent in our signals. We may be consistent in our signals in the arena, but when we step off the horse and we walk out of the arena, all of a sudden we think it's a different situation. Therefore, the horse is going to respond differently. To him, it's the same lead rope or the same bridle and the same horse and the same person. So what we do is, is inadvertently, we give different signals to the horse. And so teaching people to focus and, and teaching people to learn how to become consistent. Consistency comes with knowledge. And so it's not a matter of, of somebody making a mistake. I just teach them how to do things better. 
The Budweiser Clydesdales thrill audiences with their beauty and strength. Manny Rabber heads up the team of drivers who travel the country with these world famous ambassadors of the equine world. Mr. Raber, Manny, nice oh, to meet you. Thank, you. thank you for being with us today. I, I realize you just came off a show uh, and, and, you're, and you're probably kind of wore out, but I was wondering if I could ask you some questions about your horses and your team. Sure. Okay. Uh, how long have you been driving these horses? Uh, the, these are uh, about five years. About five years? Grand Heisen Bush is about five years. What is your background that kind of prepared you to be able to work with animals? Uh, like I grew up on a farm. We had uh, draft horses, we had Belgians. Belgians? Farm with them a little bit, and then we showed them some. Ah, I see. Well, tell me a little bit about the the the, the Budweiser team. How long have they been together? Uh, these uh, Anheuser Busch has had the Clydesdale since 1933, and they were a gift from uh, August Jr. to his father to celebrate the appeal of prohibition. Uh, it's always Clydesdales. The horses yep. are always Clydesdale. They're they're such magnificent animals. Are they bred? particularly for this team, or who, who picks the, the horses that are going to be on the team? They, uh, uh, people in St. Louis, are the, they buy and sell all the horses, and then uh, they're not specifically bred for this team, but uh, we buy some, and they're going to be uh, all bay, uh, white Specific face. Specific coloring. Yep, yeah. or white legs, and stand around 18 hands. And uh, we raise a lot of them. Uh, we buy some all over. Some we get some out of Canada, some out of the states. Right. We even have right. three here from Scotland. From Scotland. Yeah. Oh. How long does it take you to get get the animals ready for a show? Uh, it takes about half an hour to braid them up and 45 minutes to hitch them. To hitch them up. Do they do they their their gear? It, it's it's substantial. Is that how? How much does that weigh? Each horse is carrying about 130 pounds. He's all fully harnessed. It's a lot of weight. Yeah. <laughs> the weight that they, uh, the wagon itself, when they're all hitched up to it, the wagon weighs about 6,000 pounds. 6,000 pounds. Each horse can hold, they weigh about 2,000 pounds, and each horse can hold twice his weight. We, we've got a lot of great uh, shots of you uh, with your horses. You do a fantastic job uh, spinning, turning. Uh, we appreciate you talking with us, and uh, we hope to see you again. You <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Trail riding continues to gain in popularity each year. Getting out with friends on your favorite horse for a ride through the backcountry or on a wilderness park trail can be a little slice of heaven if you and your horse are prepared. Brad Neff, an experienced trail guide, has been mapping the riding trails of East Tennessee for several years now. He offered us first-hand advice on how to make trail riding a safe and enjoyable sport for both you and your horse. Well, I think it is important for uh, beginners to start riding with experienced riders. And one of the main reasons is experienced riders tend to have experienced horses. And I've often found on my spare horse that I'll encounter something and he, he won't go through it. Uh, one time I encountered, I was in the front and I came to a big water crossing and he just says, no, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> and then when the other horse went across, he goes, oh, okay, if it's safe for them, it's safe for me. And of course, horses can watch the other horse and they see their footing and, and so it's just a lot easier if they have uh, another horse that they somewhat trust to follow along. And this horse, of course, the same thing goes for riders. You can see what an experienced rider does. And, and try to do the same thing. If the experienced rider gets off and walks his horse, you probably better get off and walk your horse. Uh, trail map's a good idea when you go riding. Uh, one thing, if, if so if you do get lost, you have some idea of how to get back. But even more important, it's kind of a safety issue. If uh, one of the people that's riding with you was to get hurt, and you went back to tell somebody where you're at, and you go, well, <laughs> I don't really know where I was at, but <laughs> at least if you have, can point at something and say, I think it was around this area then uh, you can get rescuers to you a lot quicker, uh, help your person, help the horse, whatever's necessary. So really it's, the main thing is uh, enjoyment so you know where you're going, but the other thing is it's really critical for safety if uh, you do have an accident to get you quick uh, response. If you're gonna go on an all day trail ride, um, you're gonna go a fair distance. So one of the things I would recommend is that you carry some sort of alternative shoe. Uh, if you do throw a shoe, you're gonna, if it's the front shoe especially, you're going to have to walk 
or you're going to be able to put this alternative shoe on and you can keep going. So that's the main thing I carry is a, it's called an easy boot and that al allows me to keep going if my horse throws a shoe. Um, I carry cross ties. Uh, I don't want my horse chewing on trees so I can cross tie him. Um, a lot of times uh, if I have any thought that it'll rain, I carry rain gear for me. I always carry first aid kit and I always carry a little repair kit that allows me to fix uh, minor problems with my saddle or if my horse steps on the reins and breaks the reins, I need to be able to repair that. And another thing, of course, you want to carry is plenty of water. I have a water bottle that has a treatment unit inside of it so I can fill it at streams in case I run out of water because I drink a lot and that's been real handy. When I carry a first aid kit, I really think mostly about my horse and unfortunately horses are kind of hard to doctor. I carry uh, something to try to stop bleeding, uh, a big gauze and a vet wrap and some tape. And then for myself I carry uh, just the basic things, uh, aspirin, um, antacid, things that make me more comfortable. I, I like to trail ride because I find it real enjoyable. I work my horse a lot in a ring and that's, uh, you might call it rewarding, but I really don't call it fun. But you get out on the trail and I like to explore. I like to see new areas, so uh, it's fun to go to a new place. You really don't know what you're going to see or what to expect or what obstacles you're going to find, and, and it's really rewarding for your, you and your horse to face something that's challenging and uh, be able to get through that and make the whole ride and just have a good time. Remember, the more remote the ride, the greater the risk. Fortunately, serious problems or accidents are usually rare, and with careful planning, preparation, and using common sense, you and your horse can have a memorable ride. The nature of horses has not changed since they were first domesticated thousands of years ago. They learn quickly and with every encounter. They are opportunistic and they will take the path of least resistance. They need interaction and they enjoy our attention. The more you come to understand their nature, the more rewarding the time you spend together will be. As always, when you are horsing around, be safe. Okay, you want to do it one more time? No.